Hello friends and welcome once again to our online Bible study. My name is Paul Cartwright and I'm the preaching minister for the Web Chapel Church of Christ here in Dallas, Texas. I hope that these videos on the life of Christ are helping you with your daily walk with the Lord. I hope that you are sharing these videos with people who are curious about the life of Christ and who would like to take a little bit more in-depth look at the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I would ask that you would subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you can be alerted when new content was available. If you are enjoying these videos, we'd be happy if you would give a like to anything that you are watching. This week, we are going to start the portion of the life of Christ that begins at the third Passover in his ministry until his arrival at Bethany. We're going to be shifting from the Gospel of John, where we've been the last several weeks, back over to the Gospel of Matthew. Join me today as we read from Matthew chapter 15. Then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat. He answered them, And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of tradition? For God commanded, honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if anyone tells his father or his mother, what you, what you would have gained from me is given to God, he need not honor his father. So, for the sake of your tradition, you have made void the word of God. You hypocrites! Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said... This people honors me with lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. I love the fact that Jesus was not afraid to say what needed to be said when it needed to be said. So the first question I'd like to deal with today is this. Why was tradition so important to the Pharisee, the Pharisees and is keeping tradition wrong? First, you have to realize the Pharisees were the authority on the law. The Pharisees in Jewish society were learned men. They were people that were highly respected. They were people <clears throat> who were experts on what the law said. The problem is that the Pharisees, while being experts on what the law said, were also very well versed in man-made tradition that had made its way into the law and, in fact, sometimes took the place of the law. They would keep man-made tradition, <clears throat> pharisaical tradition, over the law of God. And so that means that they were wrong for that, that they were sinful in doing that. Which kind of leads us to the second part of this question of, is keeping tradition wrong? Now, there are things in the Bible that we're asked to do, and we're asked to do them on a regular basis. We are asked to meet together on the Lord's Day. We are, we are commanded to do so. We are commanded to partake in the Lord's Supper of unleavened bread and fruit of the vine on the Lord's Day. And so, by virtue of the fact that we do these things every week on the first day of the week, that's a tradition. And it's not wrong to keep that tradition. When it becomes wrong is when we keep that tradition just for the sake of that tradition. When it becomes wrong is when we add things to that tradition that are not in keeping with the Word of God. When it becomes wrong is when we begin to worship and uphold that tradition over the will of God as we see it played out in the pages of Scripture. Another question that we might talk about today is this. Why is the way that Jesus confronts the Pharisees so effective? Now remember, the Pharisees have come to Jesus and asked why his disciples don't keep tradition. And by virtue of asking this, they're also implying that Jesus is not in favor of keeping tradition because he allows this to go on. And so he, he's approached having a question asked about tradition. But what does Jesus do? Jesus comes back and says, why do you not keep the law of God? And he begins to talk about honoring father and mother and about how a man-made pharisaical tradition 
is in direct opposition to honoring the father and mother, and yet the Pharisees hold that tradition up over the law. The reason that Jesus was so effective in refuting the Pharisees was that he was using the Word of God. We are told in Scripture, the Word of God is living and active, and that is sharper than any double-edged sword. The Word of God can bring light into this dark world. The Word of God can help us in any situation where there is inconsistency. And that's really what was going on here. The Pharisees were living a very inconsistent life. They were teaching a very inconsistent doctrine. And thus, people weren't listening to them. People weren't following them. Unless it was because of tradition. Unless it was because they feared reprisal in some way. When we use the Word of God, when we understand the Word of God, when we apply that Word to our lives, when we see that the Word of God is not just words on a page, but it is living and active. It can shine light in the darkest places in our lives. It can bring consistency where there has been inconsistency. And I am thankful for that. As we come to a close today, in, in this passage, Jesus quotes from the prophet Isaiah when he says, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrines and commandments of men. That's found in Isaiah 29.13. As Christians, are we struggling to not be guilty of living lives like the ones Isaiah has described? I have been involved in professional ministry since 2002, and every congregation I have worked with, I have seen the struggle that Jesus is talking about right here. I've seen a group of Christians who passionately were seeking after the will of God in all aspects in their lives, only to see that same group of Christians show up and go through the motions on any given Sunday. There is an ebb and flow to the life that we live, and there is an ebb and flow because we don't always follow the Word of God. We're fine with tradition, we're fine with showing up and doing the things that we've been told are pleasing to God, but far too often... We don't seek to go deeper. We don't seek to understand the reasoning behind the tradition. We don't seek to know the Word of God and let the Word of God be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, as the psalmist would say. And so, yes, we do still struggle and act like the people the prophet Isaiah was talking about. But there is hope. This last year, COVID-19 has done some terrible things in our world. But one of the good things COVID-19 has done is allowed us to have a reset. It's allowed us to look at our relationship with the Lord. It's allowed us to spend some more time with God. And the greatest tragedy of 2020 and COVID-19 that I see is that if we don't take God up on this opportunity... It's not too late. You can still re-examine your relationship with God. You can still take that relationship more seriously. You can still honor God over tradition. Tradition, for the sake of tradition, will never be pleasing to God. But when we see the Word of God as living and active, and when we celebrate God through the keeping of the direction from God, then He is pleased. I hope that you've enjoyed this lesson today. I hope that you will share this video with those seeking out the Lord in their lives. Again, we'd ask that you like this video, that you would subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on your notifications so that when new content is available, you will be alerted. I hope that those seeing this message are all well. I hope that you are in good health. I hope that you are able to feel the presence of God in your life every day. I hope that you're studying and drawing closer to God. I look forward to being again with you next week, but until then, God bless.